Hey guys, Leanna here, playing Little Big Planet Tree. Whoops. And uh, I uh, made El Saki Boy, or as they're calling it in this game, Sack Folk. Even though, uh, you know, Sarah Silverman doesn't have to neuter her name to Sarah Silver Person. But that's okay. Not everybody has to have the same philosophical thoughts about Sackboy that I do, but they do have to explain to me why I keep dying there. But, so, I, I, if you'll notice, I dude it up my, why does it keep doing that? That's annoying. I want to jump, there. I've dude up my Sacky person as Ellie from The Last of Us because I got a request again to talk about the latest Anita Sarkeesian thing. And I, I don't mean to sound, you know, ungrateful or shitty about it. Um, I'm glad you guys value my opinion on these topics. I just wish we could have these discussions in a non-oppositional framework. Just, I, you know, I don't want to come across as attacking her. I'm just challenging her ideas because her ideas, I think, are... <sighs> They don't match my experience and the experience I've observed of other people's and that's uh, The latest speech that I don't think is actually all that new. I think it's whoa I think it's from the same talk that she did the what I couldn't say thing at but you know she's she's a What's the word she she courts controversy and, and there's no denying that. And the latest thing is her odd attack on internet feminism or what she believes is internet feminism. She did a talk at this panel discussion that among other people, Jermaine Greer was on. And the first cringeworthy thing for me was that, ooh, I'm standing on salmon, mmm, salmon. But the first cringeworthy thing is, and she wasn't the only one doing this. I noticed notes on a bunch of the other women's laps. Unfortunately, you know, Go Feminist Frequency, their video that someone linked me to only had her part and not, you know, the, the, the contributions of, you know, utterly luminary feminists like Jermaine Greer. Jermaine Greer's second wave, I believe. But whoopsie, okay, whoa, okay. So, first of all, there's that. When, you, when you're reading from notes in a panel discussion, it, it just shows an unawareness of format. We all have our chance to make speeches and some people are extremely good. What the hell happened there? Uh, some people are extremely good at speaking when they've got prepared material, but a panel discussion is designed to be more... I'm going to get squished. Ah, oh, I didn't get squished, but I got drowned. A panel discussion is designed to be more off the cuff. It's designed to be more casual. And I just cringe when I see people with notes in their laps in that format. It's just, did you come to play or did you come to fart around? You know, that's just my personal response to that. So immediately I was put off. So take that into consideration going forward with my opinions, that there is uh, a certain emotional bias there that I couldn't do anything about. And how do I do this? Okay, that's going to push me up every time I go up there. Hmm. So, um, she talked about the sorry state of internet feminism, and I was like, really? But she's not functioning in the same brand of internet feminism that uh, that I am, which is she claims that internet feminism is being taken over by this, I forget what she called it, by basically an individualistic approach to feminism, which is anything that an individual finds empowering, okay, who knows, maybe that was a shot at me, because that's not the kind of internet feminism I encounter on a regular basis because it's impossible to say there is any real sort of internet feminism as a whole. There are 
second waivers on the internet. There are first waivers on the internet. Well, probably first waivers are all dead now, but, or not on the internet. But there, there are many, many different types of feminism on the internet. So that, how do I get up there? Hello? Oh, maybe this is a swoop thing that I cannot do. Well, that doesn't make any sense. But, you know, r right there, we have a classic Sarkeesian generalization that becomes insurmountable regarding accepting the, the whole of her, of her talk. And again, this is me again saying she's speaking from prepared notes in a panel discussion. Egads, right? So let, let's talk about that. This idea that what someone finds individually empowering can still be a problem. Well, sure, if you're too aggressive about it, I'll, I'll give her that. If you want your particular brand of feminism to be what everybody else practices, I suppose I can see her point. But then I start thinking, isn't that what she does? Like, doesn't she use her own brand, what she's comfortable with, and, and try to make that into a guidebook for the rest of us? And, you know, this whole thing about patriarchy may work for some women. No, Anita, no. Patriarchy, you know, being able to navigate patriarchy doesn't mean it works for you. It means you've gotten good at making the best of a bad situation. You know, I think what it is, is that some women are less exposed to a patriarchy because let's face it patriarchs don't want women speak in their mind they don't want anybody speaking their mind patriarchs are surrounded by yes men and women oh hey oh there's a thingy there that i have to get no give me give me this give me this. hey there we go okay that wasn't happening before why what come back come back okay i need my boost boots Boost boots, there we go, okay. So, you know, and, and this, was, this is what drives me crazy. So many feminist discussions founder on this idea of patriarchy, okay? And I've, I've dealt with this in an essay, but I'm gonna repeat it because it keeps getting screwed up. It, you know, to paraphrase Angry Joe, they done fuck it up, okay? So, not every man is a patriarch and patriarchal systems don't benefit all men equally. And this is important to distinguish between men in a patriarchal system and actual patriarchs. You know, George H.W. Bush is a patriarch. The average Main Street Joe Lunchbox is not a patriarch. And this is important to distinguish that the concept of patriarchy does intersect with income inequality and, and issues for all. It does intersect with, you know, racial issues because there ain't many black patriarchs. <laughs> maybe Jay-Z, maybe. And even then, even then I'm not sure I'd go so far. Maybe. But, you know, that, that is the important thing to talk, when we talk about patriarchy and she goes on at length with her armchair quarterbacking on the whole thing. But right there, in her criticism, she's telling all women how to live. And here's my, here's my fundamental point of disagreement that I think is insurmountable with the way Anita Sarkeesian thinks about feminism. I, I don't remember exactly when it was. I think it was when I was still doing, yeah, it was when I was still doing dance that I became, so I was probably about 15 years old, you know, old enough to have boobs, not old enough to be comfortable having boobs. Um, oh no, I think this is gonna restart, or is it? Yeah, okay, good. Um, and we were in a competition, and I, those of you who, who do dance competitions and, or any sort of theater, you, you're probably aware of the crazy changes that, no, why did that not bounce? This level's buggy. This level's buggy level, don't be buggy. Um, you're, 
you may be aware of the crazy quick changes that happen in performing arts. And so there was one of them. And there was someone's father in the room, not from our studio, from another freaking studio. Because it's all communal. Basically, dance competitions take place at high schools. And so they just give us a classroom to change in with the door open when, you know, you're teenage girls and on the young side of being teenagers, because most girls by the time they hit 16 or 17 are focusing on university and not heavy duty dance competitions. So there was this guy in the room and we had to make a decision very, very quickly because we only had something like five numbers to change, which is only 15 minutes. We had to make a decision very quickly between modesty and getting the job done. And we chose getting the job done because we didn't want to let down the other people who we'd worked hard with for months working on this routine, right? So that's where Anita Sarkeesian and I differ is in this concept of shame. She acts as if the female body is something inherently shameful and should be covered up. And I'm not sure she even realizes she's done this. And that is thinking influenced by patriarchy. So she's right when she says, you know, it's a work in progress and people make mistakes. And that is, I maintain, a fundamental mistake in her thinking. Like I keep fucking up this level. <laughs> okay, don't fuck it up now. Gotta get it right, get good. Okay, so she keeps, she keeps supporting patriarchy every time she tells women, fictional or non-fictional, to cover up. Our, our shame regarding our bodies and our, what the hell? Our shame regarding our bodies and our fashion choices. That's patriarchy, folks. That idea that we should be, cover up, your body's shameful. That, that is embedded patriarchal thinking in Anita Sarkeesian. Stop talking over me, lady. Um, you know, her, her idea that, you know, that, that character up there. See her? I don't know if you saw her. Anita Sarkeesian would hate that character because she's pink and she's a queen and she's classical gender roles and all that stuff. So what? Why can't we give value to the feminine experience for God's sakes? Well, because patriarchy dictates that the male experience is inherently better, right? And, and who pushes that line of hokum or bunkum because it's a little big planet? Anita Sarkeesian. Being told to cover up is patriarchy, Anita, and you do that over and over and over and over and over again. So don't lecture me on individual feminism and patriarchy. Like, holy cow, lady. If you really want what's best for everyone, you'll recognize that women come in very different personalities. And this idea that there's a one size fits all approach, are you on crack? Like, you're saying this as someone who had access to a university education, Anita. You're saying this as someone who had a lot of opportunities in life that some people don't. Some people's opportunity in life is a really great ass and, you know, dancing ability. And who's to say that's friggin' wrong because that's getting them out. That's no different than somebody getting a sports scholarship. And this, you're using your body to get ahead, smear. That men and women both apply to women and far less so to men. You don't hear men being accused of getting their body to get ahead. Um, that's a smear that uniquely hurts women because let's face it, when we're saying we're, you're using your body to get ahead and I press the wrong button there, you're not talking about somebody who's a boxer or a basketball player, are you? No, you're saying you're using your feminine sexuality to get ahead. That's what you're using your body to get ahead means. And it's usually an I can't do that so I hate you sort of thing. And yeah, it does bite you in the long run. I'll, I'll tell you first off that it, it does, you know, first, first off, firsthand. It does bite you. I established my career in sexualized content, but guess what? Nobody took me seriously. And I'm not saying that's right. I think women should be allowed to be sexual and still be taken seriously. I think that moving forward, that is feminism. That we should be allowed to express our sexuality appropriately. You know, not around kids who can't contextualize it and can't understand it. But we should be able to be sexual beings and still be treated like 
people with intellectual potential. We shouldn't have to choose. Why did that not work? And people like Anita Sarkeesian make us choose between a healthy sexuality and being taken seriously. And I wish she'd realize it. I wish she realized how she hurts many women out there who didn't have the opportunities via income to have the opportunities she did. And we're just trying to get by in our own way. You know, we didn't have the money to go through and get an expensive master's degree. And, and we don't have the money to fly around all over the place making speeches. And, you know, we don't have the money to get degrees on, on the Yiddish word is chazerai. A lot of people in disadvantaged countries consider, you know, communications degrees and, and, and gender studies chazerai because you can't get a job with it. You have to create a job with it. And the, the sheer, the shocking amount of unaware privilege in Anita Sarkeesian's thinking is baffling, it's frustrating. Because she goes on and on and on and on about intersectionalism, and then she advocates a one-size-fits-all approach. What? You keep using this word. I do not think it means what you think it means, Anita. Intersectionalism is inherently mosaic. Yes, it is individualized. Individualized feminism is a hallmark of the third wave. As I think I said off the top, I had to do this a few times, so forgive me if I repeated myself. But the, the entire point of the third wave is to get away from this idea of women as a mass and get into women as individuals. In all those books you claim to read, Anita, did, did you miss that? You know, did, did you miss that we're now allowed to disagree without it being, oh, you're a gender traitor? L like, th this is the problem with people reading books and thinking they're an expert. When experts have to go out and actually apply their theories and live it. And obviously, you know, I grew up in very different ah, social economic cir circumstances than Anita did because, oh man, my lens is totally different. You know, my feminism is, is a world of teen mothers and domestic abuse survivors and things like that who have had to do some hard things, who have had to make some hard choices. And, you know, my feminism is a feminism of hip hop music. It's very sexualized. Nicki Minaj feminism, let's call it that because we love to put friggin' labels on everything. That's where I come from. Not this, oh no, it harms all women. Who gives a shit when you're trying to pay rent? Seriously, lady, who gives a shit if you're hurting all women when you're trying to feed your kid and you call yourself an inter intersectionalist? Fuck you. Check your fucking privilege, lady. And yeah, I'm using a gender term. I don't friggin' care, because you know what? She's a lady, so what? I'd say man. If it was a dude, I try to use dude and guys as gender neutral terms just because I like guys and I like dude. But the, the, and I have been spending a lot of time of late because I am very seriously interested in creating a Big Ten approach to feminism in video games because I think it's important, but I think it's important to not lose anybody while we're having these conversations. I think we can have both. And so I've been acutely aware of the reasons that people get enraged by the things she says. And she knew that those comments against an individualized approach to feminism were gonna piss people off. She knew it, she said so. So she knew she was making a deliberately provocative statement. Now, I believe those are her views because she's lived a life of privilege. You're, you're not going to get someone who had it much harder espousing those views because they know better than to judge. And that's why I think we need multiple voices because, I mean, her, her boobies are bad feminism is great, but it is infecting the internet as well. Shame culture has permeated the internet. I mean, what she's essentially doing is slut-shaming and she doesn't realize it, right? 
she's saying that, oh no, act like a slut and all women pay. Like, what the hell, lady? No. This isn't a Shonda for the Goyam situation, okay? Al Franken made a joke about that kind of thinking in his books because it's silly. The, the fundamental purpose of a democracy is one person, one vote, one person, one idea. One person, one life, one person, one soul. And you want to take that out of the dialogue, Anita? Well, doesn't that benefit you, right? Because you were first out of the gate. So it benefits you to make everybody conform to your line of thinking. And you talk about neoliberalism? Yes, neoliberalism, Anita, is called progressivism. It's, you know, socially progressive. That's what it's called progressive. It's progressive thinking, not socialist thinking. And in the, the left libertarian movement, or, you know, the individualized left, the neo-left, as you misidentified it, is about individual expression. It does mean that every time I open my mouth, I don't want to speak for all women everywhere. No, I don't want to speak for all women everywhere. Cause you know what? I don't. And my words do not hurt all women everywhere any more than yours do. Cause you know what? We're human beings who can think for ourselves. Thank you very much. And I keep dying on the same place. I'm going to keep ranting until I pass that place. And that, how does anybody trust someone who basically says you are not allowed to decide for yourself what feels right for you? I mean, those are the same people who are trying to take, uh, trying to forcibly make, you know, Middle Eastern women unveil, which can be a very traumatizing experience. I mean, uh, you know, no one from, you know, ah, okay, I got past it, but then I died there. We don't... I think if you don't come from a culture that that involves the hijab, I think you really need to stop talking about what people do with the hijab personally. Um, it's none of your business, and that's a big issue in Canada. But, you know, to say women are allowed to take an individualized approach to their own lives is attacking women who choose to cover up more than Anita does as much as women who choose to not cover up like Anita does. Now, personally, my attitude is anything that should come off, sh that can come off should not be part of your identity because it can be used against you. And I go back to that, you know, little anecdote I had about changing in with somebody's dad in the room. What, when you work in theater, you have to realize if somebody's going to be a pervert about something you're doing professionally, it's not, it's on them, it's not on you. And, you know, if you have to change for a medical appointment, that's not shameful, being naked. That's medicine, okay? And th this idea of don't sexualize, don't sexualize ever, that Sarkeesian spews, no, that, that's her approach. That is her individualized approach. If we're going more what's good for everyone, what's good for the, the, the needs of the many to go all Spock on you, and he didn't say that, but people know it through him. You know, it's going to be, no, I don't want to be compelled to wear, you know, a push-up bra or a low-cut thing or anything like that. But if somebody else wants to do it, that's okay, because both should be respected. Both choices should be respected, right? All life experiences should be expected that aren't hurting everybody else. Those should be respected. Oh, come on. This level's hard. So this is sort of a, a metaphor right now for a feminist debate. You know, we, we keep making teeny tiny progress, but then something stupid happens. We can't pass the damn level. And I just, the, the, and the, these aren't off the cuff comments. If she was just talking and made a contradiction like this, whatever, people misspeak when, when they're off script. It's harder to be consistent when you're just having a back and forth and, you know, authenticity over, ah, oh, no, over consistency, right? But this has got to be freaking near the end of this game. But for her to say that 
without with, with notes in front of her not off the cuff this is not this is my view this is my prepared statement advocating that everything i say could potentially hurt other women well okay anita based on that uh, you know based on that argument that what we say can hurt all other women which you said not me i'm playing by your rules right now you know based on that you saying you know, that we should cover up and it is our mandate, it is our responsibility as women to not be sexualized. <laughs> well, what does that do to that poor girl in high school that through no fault of her own gets called a slut, gets slut shamed? Well, guess what, Anita? You just sent her that message that there is something wrong with her because other people decided to judge her sexuality in a negative light. That's what you do when you go sex negative like that. That is what you do. And that's why we have to be careful. That does cause harm because guess what? Those of us with a large um, listener base or a large viewer base or a large fan base, we can hurt or harm other people with our words. But most people, no, most people just have to work on being the most authentic them that they can be. And you are counter to feminists who are out there working with people like Rachel Simmons, like, um, oh, blanking on the woman who wrote Queen, Queen Bees and Wannabes. But, you know, you, you're counter to that. Because the message with people who actually have to go in there and work in communities is be yourself. Be yourself. Be authentic. Don't be afraid to go with the, don't be afraid to go against the grain. Be you. Be an individual. And you're saying, no, don't be an individual? Ugh. What? Like, was not enough for you. talk about freaking dangerous thinking, right? There don't be an individual. And that's, I'm sure, not what she was intending to say. But people cannot spend their whole lives thinking, you know, because I, I get double, right? I'm Jewish, too. So we have this stupid, is it good for the Jews thing, too. As if being Jewish is supposed to demolish every other element of your personality. And it's a bit of a joke now, you know, is it good for the Jews? But, you know, sometimes, and even, even the, you know, the, the Torah says, be a human being first, man. Don't be dumb. A lot of the Torah is just don't be dumb. And, you know, the Torah and, and the, the Midrash and, and the, the commentary books are full of stories of people who went against the grain because it was the right thing to do instead of the easy thing to do. And uh, what happened there? Well, where'd I go? Oh, cool. Oh, error. Check that out. It's broken. Busted. Okay. So, you know, the, the scholar Hillel, who I'm a huge fan of, yeah, everybody who complains that I argue both sides of an argument, blame him because that's his method. You always present the opinions of your opponent to keep the debate respectful, show you understand and strengthen your position to show that you're not coming at it from the position of an ignoramus. But it's, he, his life was saved. I believed it was him because he almost froze to death and they kindled fire on the Sabbath to warm back water to stop him from dying of exposure. Uh, this is crazy, this idea that being an individual is bad. And maybe I misunderstand. Maybe she needs to clarify her position. But I'm just not going, oh, there's things up there. Hey, how do I get those? Um, but th these are the things where, th this is why the rest of us don't put this kind of pressure on ourselves, Anita. We're not arrogant enough to say, I speak for all women. No, of course I don't. I can't. I can't. I'm a white person. I can't possibly speak for people with different, you know, backgrounds than me. I've only got one piece of the puzzle, you know? And I don't know what it's like to be a rich person who can do a super poofy masters. I didn't have that opportunity, but I'm not mad about it. I don't think it's worse or better, it just is. Congratulations, Anita, you had obviously a charmed life in that regard. But don't tell the rest of us that you're 
better than us, which is essentially what you're saying. Don't tell the rest of us that you're better than us because you had more opportunities. You would and you off. this lady's gonna talk over me now. Soon be and it's really cute. So I'm gonna stop talking now. Composure. Thanks, guys. After all, we're finally on track for a happy ending. How oh no, a happy ending? That's a trope! Target practice. Fools. No, sad boy! We Swoop! Okay, now I'm just being a tool. 